So are you ready to feel a little bit of hope? Let's feel some hope together. Wow, this stat. Youth-led Sunrise Kids made well over half the phone calls that helped upset a senior and powerful house dem. Major force to counteract typical structures in elections. And he's uh, responding there to Varshini Prakash, I apologize if I did not pronounce that correctly, who says, My God, I just found out that of the 1.3 million phone calls made for Jamal Bowman, Sunrise Movement Kids made almost 850 thousand of them the young people are organized the young people are fired up the young people will win you can count on it i love that i love that this is exactly what we needed this is exactly what we needed it's it was a little bit of a letdown with bernie in the primary because it appears like that youth turnout wasn't there um but make no mistake about it, if the youth gets engaged, the left wins. And I mean that. If the youth gets engaged, the left wins. Because, you know, younger people are overwhelmingly left-leaning. Um, but what happens as a general rule in elections is that older people view voting as a civic duty, so they always show up. Young people don't necessarily view it as a civic duty. And so they don't show up. They only show up in instances where they really like the politician, which is reasonable. Um, but if you show up in every election like this and vote for the left candidates, the left can easily start sweeping. And, you know, I've speculated that I think one of the main reasons why the left did so well in this recent election is because look at what's happening. We have a pandemic. People are losing their health care in a pandemic. And you have what is effectively a Great Depression with 20% unemployment, over 20% un unemployment, actual unemployment. So in a situation like that, it turns out the candidates who are out there saying, hey, I'd like to help you, please. Those are the ones who get the support, not the corporate Democrats who say, I kind of agree with the Republicans and maybe we'll find some middle path and not the Republicans who are like, I want to actively hurt you. <laughs> so the left won and they won because young people got directly engaged. That is a great sign for the future because not only are the young people voting, not only are the young people engaged, but the young people were making phone calls, getting directly involved. So, as I said in a previous segment on this election cycle, if you don't win your election, it's okay. Take a couple days to sulk, brush yourself off, and get up and try again. That's it. And then if you lose again, try again. If you lose again, try a third time. If you keep showing up, you will not be denied. There will come a time where you win, but you have to keep showing up. You have to keep doing the work. You have to not take no for an answer. And um, this is the first election cycle where there's no counter argument. There was always counterpoints when I was making the argument that, hey, Justice Democrats is a success. Let me tell you why. The left is actually gaining. Let me tell you why. And I'd cite the number of Democratic Socialists who are winning at the you know, uh, state and local level. Or I'd cite the number of Justice Democrats that made it to Washington, D.C., the number of our primaries that we won. And this was just with a, uh, this was with a permanent money disadvantage. I always saw that, okay, this is good, like, this is good stuff, but there was always the counter-argument of like, oh, well, the establishment won more seats, the center won more seats, and, and all this stuff. But now our arguments are getting harder to deny because we're notching more and more big-time victories. These aren't just wins. These are big wins. Elliot Engel was in Democratic leadership. Elliot Engel is an ancient corporate Democrat. And he was defeated. Mondaire Jones is a pro-Medicare for all gay black dude. He won my district against a couple establishment hacks. Keep fighting. There's going to be election cycles where we lose. It happens. It's politics. But you keep fighting and eventually you win. And I couldn't be more proud of these Sunrise Movement kids who made the calls. I really can't. I really couldn't be more proud of them. And I couldn't be more proud of everybody who's out there supporting uh, the various Justice Democratic candidates. I couldn't be more proud of the people out there supporting the, the Democratic Socialist um, candidates at the state and local level. Um, the other thing, the other dynamic I'm seeing now is there used to be this approach from the left that like the national elections were all that mattered. And now we're seeing a situation where people are getting more involved at the state and, and local level. 
And this is the old right-wing trick, the old Koch brothers trick. They would fund all these state and local elections, so they would pack these, you know, these governing bodies, and then they would get these, you know, terrible right-wing ideas through. Literally, they would pass laws in these right-wing states that were, like, blocking any paid leave, for example. Like, preemptively blocking any positive change. Well, it looks like the younger generation is now realizing that actually it is wildly important to get involved at the state and local level, too, because you can impact policy just as much as on the national level if you're, you know, changing laws in the state. So now there's this resurgence of passion among young people and lefties to actually make a difference at the state and local level. And that's such a positive trend. Because before it was an afterthought. Now it doesn't appear like an afterthought. So listen, we got these big wins, but this is all the more reason to keep going hard in the paint. I've told this story before because to me it's one of the most inspiring things, but um, back when Tiger Woods was young and first on the PGA Tour, he won a tournament. And he won by, like, a crushing margin. I don't remember what it was. Maybe, like, 10 strokes or something, which is insane in golf. That's a crushing victory. And instead of drinking and celebrating that night, he went to the driving range. And he practiced. And somebody asked him, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And he said, you could always get better. Jamal Bowman winning. Mondaire Jones winning. AOC winning with 72% of the vote when there were endless wealthy people funding her opponents. We could rest or we could say, oh, I smell blood in the water. Now it's time to really, really, really pounce. Really pounce. So probably the top two races right now that, you know, the left should focus on. You got to get rid of Nancy Pelosi. You absolutely have to get rid of Nancy Pelosi. Shahid Batar is running against Nancy Pelosi, and he's everything that we could ask for in a candidate. Donate to him, support him, do whatever you can, make phone calls for him. It would be the most amazing statement imaginable if Shahid Batar could beat Nancy Pelosi. We're behind, not going to lie. That's a tough one to win. But if we do it, it would really become our era if we started if we did that. And then the other one is Jen Perlman running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Getting rid of her would be amazing. It would be amazing. So those are just two examples, but, you know, try to keep your eye on everything as closely as you can. And, um, again, massive shout-out to the Sunrise Movement and to Justice Democrats and to Democratic Socialists of America. Here we come, man, and let's not stop.